Hi everyone, in this two-part series we're going to be looking at delegates and events. So actually creating a delegate is very straightforward. We simply write the keyword delegate and then as though we were creating a method, we specify a return type, so say void, the name of the delegate, I'll call this one delegate example, and then any parameters we may want. For instance here I'll specify just a single integer parameter. We could of course have multiple parameters, in which case they'd be comma separated like a normal method, or we could have no parameters at all. Let's now make a method whose parameters and return type match those of the delegate example. So it will be a void method, which I'll call foo, which takes in a single integer parameter. We can say that this method foo is compatible with delegate example. Say we have a start method, which is called when the program runs. In here, we'll make an instance of delegate example called perhaps my delegate. And we can set this equal to the foo method since it's compatible. Obviously, if we had another method, say bar, which was also compatible with the delegate example, my delegate could be set to bar instead. The point I'm trying to make is that no matter what a method does, as long as its return type and parameters match those specified by the delegate, we're allowed to store a reference to it in the delegate variable. So whichever method happens to be stored in my delegate, in this case it's of course bar, we can call it by writing mydelegate.invoke and supplying values for whichever parameters the delegate specifies. Now, instead of writing .invoke, there is a shorthand version, which is just to write double parentheses as though my delegate were the method itself. Behind the scenes, this will call invoke to actually call the method stored in the delegate. Now that we can store references to methods inside a variable, this means that we can pass methods into other methods. So if we make one more method called foobar, taking in a delegate example parameter, which we can just call my delegate as well, then when we call foobar, we can pass in the my delegate variable. Of course, it's not strictly necessary to create the my delegate variable above. We could just pass foo or bar directly into the foobar method. Whichever we pass in, the foobar method could then call it in the same way we saw previously by simply writing my delegate followed by parentheses and passing in values for the parameters. Now, to understand why this is anything to be excited about, let's look at an example where delegates might make our lives a little happier. Imagine we're making some sort of online shooter game and we have a class called player stats, which keeps track of each player's statistics throughout a round, such as things like kills, deaths, flags captured, and so forth. When the round ends, we'll want to display the names of the players who were most successful in different categories. So in the display player names class, we might have an on game over method, which takes in an array of all of the player stats. Let's start by finding the name of the player with the most kills. We'll make a method called get player name most kills, returning a string for the name of the player and taking in an array of player stats. In here, we'll create a string for the player name as well as an int for the best score. Then looping through all of the stats, we can say int score is equal to the current stats kill count. And if that score is greater than the best score, we'll update the best score as well as the name variable. This way, when the loop is finished, we can return the player name. So if we now want to know the name of the player with the most kills, it's as simple as writing string player name most kills is equal to get player name most kills and passing in all the player stats. Next, let's make a method for finding the player with the most flag captures. We can copy the most kills method since it's going to be the same functionality. We just need to change the name to most flag captures and change the way we find the score from stats.kills to stats.flags captured. Now we can simply write string player name most flags captured is equal to get player name most flags captured and pass in all of the stats. You can imagine that we might have many such methods for all sorts of different categories. All these methods are identical except for how the score is determined. This sort of situation where you've got multiple methods doing pretty much the same thing is usually a pretty good indication that you'll want to at least consider using delegates. Let's delete the most flags captured method and at the top of the class create a delegate with return type int called score delegate, 
which will take in a single player stats parameter. We can rename the most kills method to something more general like get player name top score. This will now take in an additional parameter, a score delegate, called something like score calculator. When we want to find the score, we now just say int score is equal to score calculator, passing in the current stats variable. This of course works because the score delegate returns an integer and takes in a player stats. Now let's make a score by kill count method which returns a score integer based on the number of kills. We can also make a score by flag captures method which returns a score integer based on the number of flags captured. Note that both of these methods are compatible with the score delegate. So now to find the player names, we must first of all uh, update the method name, we change that to getPlayerNameTopScore, but then we can simply pass in the scoring method that we want to use. So for this first one here I'll pass in the score by kill count, and for the second I'll pass in score by flag captures. Hopefully you'll agree that delegates have made this code a lot nicer. This is probably a good moment to mention lambda expressions, which are based on delegates. So if we consider our score delegate, it indicates a single input of type player stats and an output of type int. Thus, we can create a score delegate by writing a name for the player stats input, I'll just call it stats, followed by the lambda operator, which is an equal sign and a right angle bracket, followed finally by the output, for example, stats.kills. What we've written here is equivalent to our score by kill count method. We'll look at lambda expressions more closely some other time, but what this allows us to do is to replace the named score methods with these inline lambda expressions. I hope you found this video helpful. Following on from this, we'll be looking at events. Until then, cheers.